Hey there, Nikki Trigos here of Life I Design. I know that there are some people out there who want to learn how to watercolor but are afraid of drawing and sketching. And as an instructor and an artist and an author and all of the things that, um, all the hats that I wear, my goal always when I am showing you process or teaching you technique or helping you grow your skill is to make sure that you're empowered with the how, with the process, with the parts that I feel like you don't get to see in snippets on Instagram in a reel um, or even here on YouTube so much. I want to empower you with the how the really beginning part so that you can create your own process for sitting down and making art. So I don't want you to sit and to follow me exactly as I go through how to paint a bird because I want you to develop the skills that you need before you actually sit down to paint that bird. That is where all of the questions of what am I going to paint next? What am I going to draw next? How am I going to, what colors am I going to use? That is where you start to build the foundation for being able to sit down and to paint a bird. Yes, those tutorials are helpful and there are many here on YouTube, um, but they're not my style. I want to empower you with the beginning parts as well as the how-to. So there are different things that I create and have created in the past that I feel like I just need to um, share with you how to use them exactly. So one of them is my Sketch and Paint Flowers Made Simple book. This is a really simple tool to help you build your confidence for just drawing botanicals and being able to paint them and to work in a sketchbook. When you work in a sketchbook, it actually helps you connect to your process more. It becomes very meditative. It grounds you. It inspires you to paint more. I personally have been leaning into my sketchbook practice a lot these last few years. I don't know if it's a post pandemic thing, but I find that if I start my day with my morning coffee in my studio, in my sketchbook painting, I set up my day for more calmness. I have more clarity. It allows me to even process what I have to do that day. Some people like to sit on a cushion and meditate and breathe. Some people like to go for a walk in nature and meditate. I really truly believe I found my meditation and that is in my sketchbook. So I want you to draw more and I want you to paint more and I want you to enjoy the process. So what I decided to do for today is to really share with you how to use a simple tool, how to sit down with your sketchbook and just give yourself the creative freedom of trying exploring and seeing what happens. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so if you haven't seen my book, um, Sketch and Plant Flowers Made Simple, I have an ebook version available on my website, lifebydesign.com that you can download and print or look on your iPad as you're working at your desk um, or on your computer even. And then if you like a printed version, like I do, I love just printed books. I surround myself by them constantly. Then you can buy it on Amazon and I think it's pretty much available worldwide, okay? Um, and these are books that I create myself and I self-publish. And again, they're really um, great tools to help you on your creative journey. So I hope you enjoy um, when I create these. So yeah, they probably do have spelling errors and grammar errors. I feel like this one needs a little bit of an update. So I may do that for you. So if you haven't seen the book, it basically takes you through step-by-step step how to paint specific flowers. They are flowers that I chose that, oh, there's the forget-me-not. So like this can be so meditative. They are flowers that I chose that I really love they're flowers that I grow in my garden. So I really started leaning into planting um, wildflower gardens and even more cut flowers. I'm excited for this year because um, I have a lot more seeds that I bought in my travels as well. So I'm excited to scatter those and see what happens. So automatically I've connected to these flowers because they're flowers that I'm familiar with, that I've grown and that I've been able to enjoy in person. This is just one of the ways that I share with you how you too can create this connection to what it is that you want to draw or paint next. So when you are looking to decide, 
or you're wondering, what should I paint? What should I draw? What should I work on next? Don't look externally, look internally. This is something I went over quite a bit in my creative studio session that I just hosted where I share with you my artistic planner. The artist project planner will take you through exactly my process for how to look internally. So this is a snippet of, again, my process. Um, but look, look around you, look for patterns, look for things that get you excited. That is what you should be drawing and painting next. And then if you need more help, I'm going to take you through this. So I decided to um, work on this iris. So what I'm going to do is follow my own steps. And here is the iris um, painted for you. And what I'm hoping is that you will um, be inspired to just try and we're going to sketch a little bit. We're going to put down some watercolor and we're going to make it a process so that it's quick and easy. So I'm hoping that maybe you're able to sit down, whether it's at the beginning of your day, maybe your lunch break, you've got a sketchbook with you and um, you're able to spend some time on your just creative process, your art, whatever it is that you need to be working on. Okay. So this sketchbook here is a sketchbook that I made. So it's really rough. Um, I like to recycle old books. I love paper and old books. So this is um, a cover from an old book that I took apart and I just line the inside cover and then I use it for um, whenever I am sketching and painting. Okay, so I've put in a variety of paper. This is watercolor paper. I even put in some drawing paper. Um, it's where I work out ideas. This was for a session that I hosted in my community. Um, so I just use just a variety of paper and I give myself space to paint very simply, quickly, and again, work out ideas, okay? So I'm gonna look for a section where I have some watercolor paper and I see this is a nice open spread here. So we're gonna use this one. So you can draw directly on drawing paper. You can um, draw directly on your watercolor paper. Because I wanna put watercolor down, I actually think that's the back side of the paper. This is the, I'm gonna use this side because that is the front side of the paper. And sometimes I'll use cheaper paper in my sketchbooks just because I don't need it to be precious. 50% uh, cotton is sometimes what I use in my sketchbook. Again, so I still have um, a good experience with painting, but it doesn't have to be really expensive paper, okay? And then throughout the book, I show you how um, I painted whatever it is that I sketched. So we're gonna do this um, iris, and the colors I used were lemon yellow, permanent rose mixed with cerulean blue to get that violet, so we do a little bit of um, color mixing and then some sap green. I may change it up, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna allow myself the freedom to play right now and to show you how I do that. Okay, so I'm gonna put it aside actually so I can see what it looks like. Now in terms of um, pencils, I love sketching and drawing and I love graphite and charcoal and so I have a ton and I have them around the house. Um, you may see in the studio tour that I shared recently, but I keep just jars and baskets and um, sketchbooks handy for when I'm sitting around, maybe again, having my afternoon coffee. I love coffee um, and I like to sit and sketch or if it's evening and I'm watching a show, specifically the cooking network because I love food, um, I'll have stuff around me. So I think today what I'll do is I'm going to use a 2B. So it's a little bit of a softer, um, a bit of a softer tip or graphite so that you can see it on camera better. And then I can, um, I'm looking at my desk and getting a little bit distracted, so that I can um, make sure that you can see the, the page. So again, maybe I will work on this open part. So Sketch and Paint Flowers Made Simple takes you step by step through um, what to draw next. I'm gonna go ahead and, okay, so let's make sure you can only see my desk. So again, it just takes you through step-by-step step with you know how to draw that iris. And the beautiful thing is, is the other page shows you um, what the finished iris looks like. So if you're kind of thinking, you know, it doesn't make sense, my brain can't process the shapes, that's okay, because you have the second page to have that visual example, okay? I'm just gonna keep it handy. So we start with that front petal and the front petal of the iris, I'll move down here a little bit actually. 
the front petal of that iris is kind of, we're gonna foreshorten it, so it's going to look shorter than the rest of the petals, but we want to create a bit of volume. And I'm going to just let my pencil go freely. I'm holding the pencil closer to the top, so not tight. If you hold your pencil really tight, you're going to get rigid lines. I'm going to hold my pencil up a little bit so that I have a little bit of movement, okay? So if I look here, oh, I look here actually, I'm going to just draw something really tall. And again, I'm just going to let my pencil um, be a little bit more flowy. I'm gonna draw this one a little bit bigger again so you can see and um, let it be organic. So again, I'm going to this section here. And if you aren't familiar with irises, this is where I would recommend you start to do some research. Google what irises look like. Maybe you can go to your local um, garden center and see if they have them. Buy yourself some irises, put them on your desk, really observe them from different angles, and that will help with how to draw them. So here is this little shortened one, which I think is really sweet. And the more you can vary the size of your petals and have them, um, look a little bit different from one another, the more interesting your composition will be. Okay, and there's our next one. And create just a little bit more interest. Okay, so that they all draw together. So now this um, petal kind of curls in a little bit. So we're going to start with this part of the line and then I'll bring it back into itself over and almost make it a little bit exaggerated. You can even connect these two. Okay, just really simply. So there is most of our iris. Let's go ahead and move over to this page. And this page really is just showing you how to draw on the stem. So I like to create just a thicker stalk of this iris or maybe even put in a background with this one and I can always thicken the stem let me make sure you can see here I um, can always thicken the stem as we go but I think for now that will be a nice and then I'll just put in this leaf here I think that'll be a nice um, width and then I can even draw this stem down a little bit and then you can put in pencil sort of the little lines here to create a bit of interest even in this stem here if we wanted to make it look like our petal we wanted to make it look like it was curled a little bit I think that would be really cool and then you can put this away so I'm going to put it away and then even just show you um, what the colored one looks like. So you've got a bit of a visual to follow along with me. So you can see how easy that is to get started. I'm gonna grab my kneadable eraser. So here's my most favorite eraser. And what I'll do is I'll just tidy up a little bit. So it doesn't have to be this dark when you're painting um, anything that you've sketched with this book, but I want you to see um, what that looks like. So I'm just going to tidy that up a little bit and I'll tidy this up. And don't be afraid of the pencil lines. So I love pencil lines. I feel like it adds a bit of shadow for when you're painting. I'm just going to soften them slightly because I know I'm using uh, lemon yellow, which can be really light. Okay, so let's um, bring in my palette. So the palette that I love is this ceramic one I got in Etsy. The shop no longer exists, unfortunately, um, but it's a palette that gets dirty and um, messy and that's my process. I just, I allow my palette to be and then colors just naturally mix together, um, but it is my palette that's my go-to. So right now it's not, it's not too bad. Now when picking brushes, um, you know, I often get asked what size brush are you using? Between manufacturers, the size of the brush can vary even if the number is the same. So a number six in one brand can be different than a number six in another. 
I like round brushes for when I'm painting things like this. I realized that my, there we go. Um, I realized that my face was blocking the page. I love my new setup. Let me know if you are enjoying the new setup too. I got technology is just, just perfect. Okay, so I'm going to use round brushes that are a size that suits the project that I'm working on. So if I'm working smaller, I'm going to use brushes that are smaller. Okay, I actually need to make sure that my pages stick down. So I like to use these bull clips for that. So if you're working on a painting that's larger, then you need to bring in a larger brush. If I were to use my big mop brush, this is from my new set, um, that would be way too big for the size that I'm painting. So you want to make sure that you're using brushes that complement the size of the piece you're working on. I think I'm gonna paint the entire thing. This is my number five brush um, in my life I design. I think it's number five. This is my old set where everything has worn off, unfortunately. Okay, so we are going to get started. I'm going to use some of my um, lemon yellow first, and I'll probably even add in some um, yellow ochre. But what I like to do is just start to get the lights in and um, just work on adding a little bit of color and paint. Again, this watercolor paint, I'm even just gonna play. So I'm gonna go a little bit different than what I did um, in the sketch and paint version. I'm just gonna put some paint down. So I want it to be wet. So this paper, I can tell, isn't um, the best quality. So it's not 100% cotton. Again, when I make these sketchbooks, I just kind of use paper that I have um, in hopes of reusing, right? So I want to recycle and repurpose. So I'm just going to paint it loosely and I'm going to choose which, um, oh, I just realized I think I drew out a different version, but that's okay. I'm looking at my example, it's completely different, but that's good actually, because that has a version that you can take a look at and play around with. So I think I'll do this one yellow too. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some of this yellow ochre. And while it's wet, I'm just dropping it in, letting it do its thing, blending it to create some interest. And I love, look to nature for your color palettes. I love the idea of doing a violet next to a yellow. Nature can really dictate, um, not dictate, but inspire you know what colors to use next sometimes choosing color can be a little bit challenging for some so i'm just dropping in using the tip of my brush some of that yellow ochre so again this is your warm-up this is your practice if you've never painted an iris before you know maybe this is where you start to explore it so that you have um, practiced, exercised that muscle, worked on observation for what it looks like, which is how it should be. You shouldn't be painting things once on like your best quality paper ready to frame. You need to practice it. So I'm throwing down some yellow on the stem and I'm just wiping my brush off and creating a bit of a highlight. I'm gonna put green down, but I want that yellow to show through. And I'm even going to put a little bit on the leaf too. I just want that yellow to be there so that I can, again, build on um, adding a little bit of brightness. So kind of like as an underpainting. So there are different degrees of wet and dry. Right now, my paper is starting to dry a little bit. I've got the heat on, um, it's sunny in here. So your paper will dry in varying degrees based on your environment and climate. I'm going to even create a bit of texture. So now that my paper is just kind of damp, um, it's good to be able to put in a little bit more detail. I just wanna, I think I'm gonna try to erase the pencil lines after. So that is a really great start. Now I'm going to put down some um, of my violet 
and I'm mixing my permanent rose. If you want to test your watercolor mixture, you can test it um, directly in your sketchbook. So that looks like it has a little too much um, of the permanent rose. I'm going to mix a bit of blue to cool it down and that looks like a violet that um, I'm really happy with. So you can actually test it directly in your sketchbook. I want to put in a background today I think so I'm not going to um, put anything else on this page but you can even make notes of it on the page beside. So I'm just letting the tip of my brush guide me so that I can fill in that space there. So again, I'll pick up some more of this violet tone. So I mixed some, that was actually permanent rose with a bit of Windsor blue. And if you use Windsor blue red shade, you'll get um, just a crisper, more, I would say, cooler violet, which is what's happening on the page here, which I'm really loving. So again, it's just filling in your pencil lines. And then once you paint this a few times on um, its own, I'm going to even mix in a little bit more of a cooler blue, which I think would look really nice next to the yellow. So that's a little bit more of the Windsor blue on my brush. And maybe even letting it be, I wonder if I need to throw in, throw in a little bit of a shadow here using Let's just play. Again, I'm not using a photo reference. I'm just um, allowing a little bit of play. So this color is actually even a really nice color for um, detail work too. And just with whatever is on my brush, letting it bleed and doing its thing. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see what's happening here. So just letting it bleed, doing its thing. I can even create a bit of shadow here before I put in the green. So this um, mixture is a really nice mixture for shadows too. I just added a bit more red or violet, not violet, sorry, permanent rose to the mix, which I think is lovely. And even create a bit of shadow here because of the way that, and don't go too crazy. Make sure you can see it okay. Or maybe, go crazy. <laughs> Who am I to tell you what to do? Go crazy, enjoy. This is your sketchbook. This is where it should be fun. And I really love, so when you mix color on the paper, um, it, it really starts to develop these bleeds and blends. I really love that. So I think I'm gonna throw in some of this permanent rose here to see, and just slightly, and just to enjoy that contrast because I really love what's happening in this area here. I'm not going to touch that. So I'm, um, I think I'm okay with how it's looking. I wonder if I need to add, what I'm going to do is dry off my brush and I have a really, so my puddle of um, yellow ochre, it's not even a pellet puddle. It's just my wet brush picking up highly pigmented paint. I use Windsor & Newton. Um, I love Windsor & Newton. I love their paints, I love their products, um, I love their brand, but use what you have access to. And I feel like I'm just going to, with a dry brush, create a little bit of texture here. Just very subtly. Maybe I'll even do a little dry texture here. And then let it dry. Okay, so now I think instead of sap green, I'm going to um, use olive green. So olive green and sap green are very similar. So there's my sap green on my palette. Um, there's my olive green. Olive green just has a little bit more, actually I think this is terra verde because it's very transparent. Ooh, let's see what that looks like. That's terra verde. I think that's sap green on my palette. Let's do that. It's a new color to me. Um, one that I'm exploring more of. It's a transparent color. So we'll get to see some of that yellow through. And then I think what I'll do is be a little bit heavier on this side. So I kept a little bit of that um, yellow peeking through. 
And what I think I'm going to do is even grab some, I have Payne's Gray on my palette always, just to create, again, a little bit of a shadow. I'm getting a bit messy, but that's okay. And then even under here a little bit. So when that Payne's Gray mixes with the Terra Verde, it'll create some really nice depth. I almost want to blur it out a little bit too. So I clean off my brush. Ooh, there we go. I clean off my brush into um, my water jar and then you can hear me swirling it around. There's my dirty paper towel. And then I just give it a bit of wipe. So that way you have control with how much water is on your brush so that you can do some blending while stuff is still kind of wet. Okay, so I'm gonna give that a few minutes to dry because I do feel like I want to go in. Oh, I just got my finger in it. No, fingerprints. Now I'm gonna get a, a bloom. I shouldn't have touched it, that's okay. We're gonna mix a little bit more of that violet color. Again, using my test on the dark side using my test patch that looks pretty good actually oh I like it it's grapey I'm gonna add a little bit more blue I think and then let's see if we can bring in a little bit more I wanted a little bit more definition here so maybe I don't need to let it dry completely There we go. So it's different than um, the one that's next to it, which is cool. I'm really happy. How long did that take us? Maybe 10 minutes. So it doesn't need to be a big process. And then I'm thinking I may just lay down some blue um, in the background, but only on half of it. So what I'm going to do is put down some water and you know what I'll do? I'll move this so you can see nice and close. I want you to see this process. So. I like a white background. I'm just picking up some more water on my brush. It'll be hard for you to see, but I'm priming the background so that I can throw down just some blue, I'm thinking, because blue will look nice next to the yellow. And you can do this in stages. Um, I like a white background, but sometimes I get asked the question of, you know, how do I put in a background? So you ready for it? I just loaded my brush with some blue and the watercolor will flow where there's water. So you can see it starting to bleed out. And you can wait until your piece is fully dry. I am um, impatient. And again, it's just play, right? So I can move the blue around using the tip of my brush. I can go right close up to the stem and the outline of the flower. And that just creates a little bit of a background. Okay, so I'm gonna do that around the rest of the flower. So again, just putting the water down. And I, I want it to be a little bit, I don't want it to be a full, like a glaze where I am working down onto the page. I want it to almost look like it's, you know, the sky. And you can even fade out the edges a little bit. I'm going to rotate, so don't be afraid to turn your page. It may make you a little dizzy when I'm recording. I try to not, but I'm going to always use the tip of my brush to guide me. So when you're using a round brush, let the tip guide you. That's how you make clean lines when you're painting. That's why I designed these brushes this way, so that they hold a ton of water. And this side I want it to be a little bit lighter, so I'm even going to lift my page and let it just sort of bleed a little bit. So if you have hard edge. Sorry to make you dizzy. <laughs> if 
If you have a hard edge, you can go ahead and blend it out. So again, now that I've flipped it back, I can There we go. And then even just leaving that highlight around your flower just creates a beautiful glow. And then I can just blend it on this side a little bit more. So I want this side to be a tiny bit darker, even in that little spot there. So I might even go in a little bit more. Again, different degrees of dry and wet, right? You can even create just, again, a little bit more on this side so this paper isn't again the best it's not the highest quality so my blending um, won't be on par to what I would do on a finished piece you know what I feel like I do need to fill this in but again it's my sketchbook so now I've practiced this there we go Look at how sweet and then maybe when it's fully dry I'll erase some of the um, pencil lines just gonna clean up here a little bit but now that I've practiced this I can um, take this to a more finished a better quality paper and create maybe a framed piece of art maybe a gift um, and that practice I'm distracted I'm actually going to go in and because I added that water I'm going to go in here it's bothering me a little bit <laughs> and put in a little bit more definition. So again, different degrees of wet. I think I'll do that on the um, with the yellow ochre as well. So now that it's drying, I just got my hand in it. I can again add a little bit more texture. I don't want to get too fussy, but I want there to be a little bit of depth. And I'm thinking I'll do the same um, in the stem. Oh, it's going to bleed nicely into that. Let's see what happens. It's going to bleed nicely into that um, blue. And again, if you're thinking, oh no, I just ruined it. Remember, when watercolor is wet, you're still in control. I just got my hand in it again. You're still in control when it's wet. I'm not going to stress about it. I want to add a little bit more strength to the um, leaf. But with my brush that is fairly dry, I can go and blend it and create this really cool shadow. It's almost like a glow from the, the flower then gets incorporated. And I kind of like that. Okay, so there is the finished piece. So there's the finished piece. And then what I would recommend is Try drawing it again. Use the examples in the sketch and paint book. You can study and maybe look online. Here's the book again for you to see. Um, and I'll link to everything for you, but you can look online to see what irises look like. And then that practice and repetition is what you will bring to your more finished piece that may be, again, you want to frame, you want to gift, you want to sell, whatever your goal is for painting. If you work on a piece like this, and practice it and work on your color mixing and composition, how you'll lay in backgrounds if you choose to or not, then you can work out all of those decisions in your sketchbook before you bring it to a more finished piece, okay? So I hope you enjoyed that. If you would like to purchase a copy of my Sketch and Paint um, Flowers Made Simple, again, I will link to it in the description. Give me the thumbs up if you really enjoyed this video. I am hoping to create many more of these this year on YouTube for you. Make sure you subscribe to my newsletter at lifeidesign.com because that's where we release things first. So if you wanted to get a set of brushes um, and they've sold out and you haven't been able to get a set, we release them to our newsletter subscribers first. Um, we have some bonus content. There's a creative library that we're filling with some things to help you on your creative journey. Um, and I just share a little bit about my process with my newsletter subscribers. So make sure you subscribe there as well. So give me the thumbs up, hit subscribe if you like this video, comment and let me know if it was helpful and I will see you next time.